Uh, good evening and welcome. Uh, I'm Terry Sheehan. I'm a fertility specialist with the Queensland Fertility Group uh, uh, based here in Brisbane. Uh, I'm a graduate of the University of Queensland uh, and uh, my fertility experience has been fairly broad and I've been fortunate to have fertility training in uh, both outstanding uh, units overseas and, and here in Australia. Uh, I did my fertility procedures both uh, in Brisbane City and uh, at Everton Park, where my rooms are based, right next to the Northwest Private Hospital. Um, I enjoy the job immensely. What I do like about uh, uh, the way we offer our fertility services is that not only can we achieve a pregnancy for, uh, for patients, but we can also look after that uh, pregnant woman all the way through uh, up to delivery. So it's nice to be able to see that whole pregnancy going from the early embryo all the way through to a, a baby in a cradle. So I'd like to have a chat about the things that uh, are worthwhile knowing about fertility. And uh, I think the easiest way to do that is by looking at some of the slides we've uh, put up here. We're very happy to take uh, questions from you and uh, I'd endeavor to answer those either as uh, we go along during the talk um, at uh, if uh, a, a question's appropriate to the uh, part of the talk at the time, we can uh, answer it then. Otherwise, we can have a, a, a session at the end and, uh, and talk about uh, specific things at that time. So there are a number of things which uh, are important in fertility, and it's not just a, a matter of the, the um, uh, physiology or, uh, or the technology if, if it's required. There are a number of uh, lifestyle things which, uh, which can play a, a very big role in maximizing your fertility. So uh, reducing coffee intake, certainly uh, we suggest reducing or eliminating uh, alcohol altogether if you can. Uh, having a healthy diet is uh, a, a great way of uh, improving your chances of ovulating uh, regularly and also having a, a good uh, sperm count from the male side of things. Uh, exercise is one of those factors which uh, uh, generally increases health, so that reduces your risk of things like cardiovascular disease and, and diabetes. So um, we encourage exercise and that has a healthy spin off of your having a healthy uh, uh, BMI. So uh, being of a normal weight uh, improves your chances of ovulation and in males being of a normal weight improves your sperm count too. We know that cigarette smoking reduces uh, sperm counts and for a long time we've been aware of the reduction in uh, the number of uh, uh, oocytes or eggs that uh, women have if they smoke. Uh, smoking uh, also induces a, a premature menopause. So these lifestyle things are fairly easy things that you can institute yourself even before uh, you plan a pregnancy and having all that in place makes the uh, the chances of you achieving a pregnancy by yourself without having to have a chat to us even much, much higher. So what normally happens is that uh, each month you have a slightly less than 20% chance of getting pregnant. Uh, and that's if you're the most fertile couple in the, in the country under 30. So by the end of 12 months, we expect about 85% of the population to have gotten uh, pregnant by themselves. So by the end of 12 months, about one in six couples will need some sort of a assistance in achieving a pregnancy. Uh, normally we say a third of the time it's the woman, a third of the time it's uh, the man, a third of the time it's uh, a bit of both, and 10% of the time we just never really find out what the cause was at all. Um, and if you're looking at uh, female uh, causes of uh, subfertility, the main ones are to do with producing eggs or ovulation disorders uh, or uh, having problems with the tube because the tubes are important in that they allow the transit of eggs from the ovaries uh, into the tube where the sperm uh, reaches the egg and, uh, and fertilizes it to five to seven days later. Uh, it's implanting uh, into the uterus itself and hopefully uh, uh, achieving a pregnancy there. Uh, clearly, male factors are many and uh, uh, male infertility is a, a, an important um, uh, aspect and that's why we always uh, investigate uh, both partners uh, in uh, our fertility workup. So when we first see you, if 
uh, your general practitioners referred you along. It's normally because you've been trying for about 12 months uh, or if you're over 35, we'd advise you to come along after, uh, after trying for six months. Uh, we'd like to find out, do you have any medical problems in the background? Uh, if you're taking certain medications, we need to modify or cease them before planning a pregnancy. Um, if um, you have uh, conditions such as uh, high blood pressure or diabetes, thyroid disorders, all those sort of things that uh, need to have their management optimized so that uh, you're as fit as you can possibly be before embarking on a pregnancy. We need to know, have you had pregnancies before? Um, and um, we need to know what the outcomes were. In other words, it's important we need that, that we know, have you had a number of miscarriages or if you've had very straightforward pregnancies before with, without any, uh, any concerns at all. Uh, now we, uh, organize a, a number of fertility tests and uh, for women that, that this will uh, uh, largely be uh, investigations such as checking your hormone levels, uh, checking a, a uh, maybe a day 21 progesterone which will tell us that you might have ovulated that, uh, um, that cycle. You may already have been uh, uh, doing your own uh, mid-cycle LH uh, tests which uh, uh, give us a, a quite a, a reliable idea as to whether you're producing eggs or ovulating or not. And a number of people use apps which are uh, in themselves good in that uh, it gives you an idea of, of what your cycle's been like over the uh, previous few months. So you may know to know when your most fertile uh, period is. Uh, unfortunately, apps don't uh, translate into an improved uh, uh, chance of getting pregnant so but they do have their place and that they give us some valuable information um, one of the tests that we do which is uh, popular and valuable is uh, a uh, the amh test uh, anti-malarian hormone it tells us what uh, your egg reserve may be and if you look at this graph you can see it um, at birth there are uh, really around about uh, two million uh, eggs there by the time puberty is reached uh, 400,000 eggs and by menopause less than a thousand. So really there are only about 400 eggs which are potentially fertilizable during a lifetime. Uh, and so many eggs are uh, uh, clearly wasted. Uh, one's released each cycle in the hope of um, uh, producing a, a single uh, singleton pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Ultrasound scans give us a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of information. So uh, um, that's uh, a... Uh, I think that we uh, use to not only look at the size of uh, the ovaries, but the number of uh, follicles in them, which, which tell us a little bit also about the, uh, the ovarian reserve. Uh, uh, an ultrasound can also be used to uh, check out whether the uh, tubes are open. So there's a technique called um, hycosis, which uh, uh, means uh, putting some um, dicolexophone up through the, uh, the tubes to outline them and uh, reassure us that, that the tubes are open because as I was saying before, uh, having open tubes is an important part of conceiving if you're planning to uh, conceive normally. Um, so as we've mentioned before, things like block tubes are a, a, a major concern and the, the treatment for those is uh, uh, certainly to a degree surgery, but uh, often you're looking at uh, IVF being the uh, only real solution there. Uh, a very uh, large cause of uh, uh, not producing eggs is uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. This is a condition which is largely weight related. So uh, we know that uh, you can treat this uh, quite effectively by losing five to 10 uh, kilograms. Uh, in, with polycystic ovaries, it doesn't mean you've got big cysts there, little micro cysts or less than uh, um, one centimeter in diameter. And uh, they're normally more than uh, 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 20 per side, and this oh, that's per, per ovary. Um, it's a condition which uh, can uh, produce infrequent periods and uh, consequently uh, uh, difficulty in getting pregnant. Uh, there's also an increase in the sorts of male hormones in the circulation, and this is largely evidenced by uh, having an increase in, in body hair and uh, sometimes things like acne. Um, now, the treatment of that, as I was saying, weight loss and exercise the, uh, are the first line treatments there, but there are a number of uh, things that we can uh, uh, do, including medications, which are, which are highly successful. Endometriosis is, uh, again, a, a common condition which uh, um, affects uh, chances of pregnancy. Um, 
endometriosis simply means that the lining of the uterus that comes out with the period each month is found in places where it shouldn't be. So you might find that instead of it being inside the uterus, it will be on uh, an ovary, it'll be uh, on the tubes, it'll be on bowel. So it can produce, produce all sorts of symptoms and typically pain with periods, pain before periods, uh, pain with intercourse, uh, pain with bowel movements, uh, and uh, certainly uh, difficulty with uh, getting a, a, a pregnancy achieved. Its diagnosis, unfortunately, is mainly by uh, popping a telescope in through the navel to identify it. And the, uh, the best treatment is uh, initially surgery, which means removing uh, as much endometriosis as uh, uh, can feasibly done. Uh, and there are a number of hormonal sorts of treatments we can do as well. Clearly, uh, IVF may be required in some cases. Fibroids are simply thickening in the muscle layer of the uterus and um, in themselves, they don't uh, cause uh, infertility, but they, they do uh, have some effects in that uh, they can either obstruct tubes or obstruct the cervix or um, uh, be in an area where if a an embryo is trying to implant, the implantation is ineffective because the, the fibroid uh, uh, is, uh, is causing a problem with implantation. Uh, we mentioned failure of ovulation, which is something that we see in the polycystic ovary syndrome, but you can find that with a, a number of uh, disorders, including disorders involving the uh, glands such as the pituitary and hypothalamus, which control the ovaries. So, uh, Failure of ovulation is common in, in people who, who exercise excessively or, and whom you'd be only too familiar with uh, patients who uh, are stressed having their uh, periods disappear for a time. So uh, there are a number of things that we can do to uh, uh, overcome uh, problems with ovulation. Uh, when we do a semen analysis, uh, we know there's a, a, a big fluctuation in semen analyses. So we, we normally have two of those. Um, uh, there was a rather brave, uh, a uh, scientist who uh, did his own semen analysis, uh, I think it was every day for a whole year, which was a, 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 a chart of the major fluctuations in uh, semen analysis. So doing at least um, two of those is, uh, is important. Um, uh, as far as male uh, factor goes in uh, infertility, um, we know that it's not just the number, but the, uh, and the concentration, but things like sperm movement are important. So a sperm needs to be able to move. It's got a tail, so it can uh, wiggle its way through the uh, vagina, through, the, through the, uh, the cervix and the cervical mucus, which might be hostile up through the uh, uterus itself and into the tube where it usually meets the ovary and hopefully fertilizes it. Um, there are normally quite a large number of abnormal uh, sperm and they can have two tails or three heads or they can be all sorts of uh, funny shapes. Uh, so a normal uh, semen analysis has uh, more than 4% uh, normal form. So uh, abnormal shape forms in sperm are quite common. Anti-sperm antibodies can interfere with the effectiveness of, uh, of, of sperm uh, binding to the, to the ovary. And uh, there are some conditions which can be associated with uh, things such as um, cystic fibrosis, where uh, the tubes le leading uh, from the testes may be uh, uh, obstructed or, or absent. And in some cases, uh, sperm are simply not being produced. Uh, in other words, if you've had undescended testes where uh, uh, an operation was done uh, later than, uh, than uh, in early age, um, sperm may not be produced in adequate numbers. There are a number of uh, uh, congenital conditions as well, uh, uh, certainly Kleinfeld syndrome and uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, some of the uh, ones that come to mind. Uh, but all these things can be addressed. Uh, when the uh, investigations are in, in other words, the semen analysis, blood tests to check for uh, 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 infectious diseases, chromosomes, et cetera, uh, other things that we'd like to do at uh, QFG, uh, we have a consultation with you and just discuss the results. And following that, we can usually uh, uh, set up some sort of a treatment plan. And uh, the, uh, the treatment plan can involve many, many things. Some are very, very minor interventions. Uh, and some can involve uh, more major things, uh, all the way up to, to IVF and, or surgery. So with the most simple treatments around for uh, uh, producing eggs, if somebody isn't ovulating regularly, we uh, monitor people's cycles. So we can do this with ultrasound and with blood tests. Um, 
And if we uh, need to produce um, eggs because they're not being produced by the body uh, spontaneously, there are a couple of uh, commonly used drugs such as letrozole and clomiphene, which, uh, which we use. Uh, uh, and they're, they're safe drugs. Of course, they do have potential side effects and, and multiple pregnancies is one of those things that we're very conscious of. And that's part of the reason that we monitor those uh, cycles very, very carefully. Uh, we can also inject uh, hormones which uh, come from the pituitary gland that control the ovaries and, and produce eggs. This is another way of uh, producing eggs, again, in a very controlled way, uh, using uh, cycle monitoring. One of the smaller interventions which uh, we have is a technique called uh, intrauterine insemination. And uh, this can be used for uh, unexplained infertility. Um, it's more successful in, in uh, patients under 40 and uh, uh, the most, uh, uh, and certainly uh, where it's uh, required that uh, uh, sperm donation is uh, necessary, that, that this is the technique we would usually use. And all it means is, it's a bit like having a pap smear done, it involves putting a, a tiny plastic catheter that's a little tube in through the uh, uh, neck of the uterus there and uh, introducing the semen specimen high into the uh, cavity of the uterus so that uh, it hasn't got so far to go to fertilize the egg in, in the tube. The, uh, uh, we can do this as part of a natural cycle or sometimes uh, we give injections or, or oral medications to uh, make sure that uh, ovulation is, is occurring and we monitor the cycle so that we know the right time to uh, do the insemination, which should be usually a day or so after uh, an egg's been produced. Um, clearly, if, if the, the tubes are obstructed, uh, this sort of uh, uh, procedure is not going to be so successful. Moving on to more advanced uh, approaches, so a technique uh, in, in vitro fertilization and uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection are, are uh, things that have uh, been available. Uh, uh, since uh, since the 1970s. Um, uh, IVF simply refers to um, obtaining uh, eggs from uh, a woman un uh, under um, control of a uh, an ultrasound uh, machine with a, a very fine needle uh, uh, taking eggs from the uh, follicles in the ovaries and uh, putting a uh, 100, 150,000 sperm uh, on those eggs and uh, hoping for fertilization. So. When you go through a, a, an in vitro fertilization process, um, uh, it's important that you know all about what's going on. And at uh, Queensland Facility Group, we have a, an excellent group of uh, nurses who uh, will go through the whole process, much as we go through the whole process as facility specialists as well. And uh, this lets you know exactly what sort of inject injections so you'll be having, how to do it, what days to have ultrasounds, what days to have blood tests, and uh, uh, this is a great and they showed exactly the correct technique in uh, uh, giving those injections and usually after about 10 or 12 days or, or more um, we we pick up the egg and that's done under uh, uh, ultrasound control uh, and uh, that's done in a very sterile environment with uh, you can see in that slide there are a, a scientists in the background looking down the, uh, the microscope uh, so we try to get uh, 8 to 14 eggs uh, and uh, hope for a, a fertilization after dropping the uh, sperm on the eggs uh, late on that afternoon so that by the next day we've um, uh, got a, uh, a what we call a, uh, a fertilization test which is positive we, we grow the embryos for a number of days usually uh, three to five days or so and uh, and then perform um, an embryo transfer and uh, um, this is a, a picture of um, a sperm being uh, placed on, on an egg for fertilization and this is uh, the sort of thing that the um, scientists would see under the, uh, uh, under, the under the microscope. We have a a, a, a technique called um, or a machine called uh, an embryoscope, which uh, helps us identify which are the uh, the best embryos. And uh, uh, just to show you what's happening here, the, the fate of, uh, of recovered eggs. If we were to get nine eggs, uh, probably nine of them would sorry seven of them would be mature and six would, would fertilize. Uh, and uh, we'd get about four, which would be uh, a uh, of a uh, sort of reasonable looking caliber, but uh, we'd have one or two that we could uh, transfer and hopefully have one or two that we could freeze for, for another cycle in the future. So um, 
the uh, the embryo transfer. Now that's a very simple procedure. It's very, again very like having a pap smear done. Uh, it's uh, just a matter of um, uh, uh, the patient not needing to be asleep or uh, having any pain relief. It's uh, uh, just a matter of uh, using a very fine uh, tube, uh, again, under an ultrasound control and placing that uh, uh, the embryo into the uterus itself uh, and uh, hoping that uh, about um, two weeks later, we get a, a positive pregnancy test. Uh, now that I mentioned that we have other eggs for freezing and uh, uh, the technique that's been used uh, uh, more recently is vitrification, which is uh, a very good technique. It's improved outcomes for uh, embryos uh, surviving freezing and thawing uh, enormously so much so that uh, frozen embryos are uh, pretty much as uh, uh, good as, uh, as fresh embryos when it comes to uh, transfers and, and outcomes. Um, So there are a number of things which uh, we aim to improve on and which uh, I think the uh, world of fertility is, is trying to get uh, uh, to a better level where uh, our ability to uh, select the, uh, um, the best eggs is uh, one of those things which we, we are regularly improving and really the, the major uh, determinant of uh, egg quality is age. So uh, the younger you are, the better you uh, and more fertilizable your eggs are going to be. Uh, selecting the best sperm is um, something that uh, you know, we have uh, techniques to do. Uh, and selecting the best embryos is something where there seriously is um, a, uh, uh, a breakthrough uh, with artificial intelligence, which the uh, Queensland Fertility Group has been very much involved in. Uh, it's a, um, a technical IDA and uh, uh, it, it involves uh, looking at the uh, uh, pictures of, of embryos and determining which of these is going to be the best one to put back. Uh, and overall, we're trying to put those things together and uh, come up with a, your best chance of having a, a healthy baby. So uh, I've uh, got some questions here and uh, um, I've just been asked uh, with polycystic, I've got polycystic ovaries and uh, infrequent periods. Um, uh, I've been told there are a number of medications. I don't want to have uh, um, clomiphene or, uh, oh, sorry, I don't want to have um, uh, injections. Uh, I've heard uh, uh, choices involve clomiphene or letrozole. Are they the same? Well, they're both anti-estrogen sorts of medications. And uh, we know with letrozole that uh, uh, we tend to get uh, more eggs. Uh, they're probably better quality. And uh, uh, the live birth rate is probably almost... Um, half as good again as, uh, as clomiphene and this is in patients with polycystic ovaries. So uh, as far as side effects go, uh, there are uh, hot flushes, night sweats, the sorts of things you can get and, and letrozole is, is probably slightly better, uh, better tolerated. Um, we've got a, another uh, question here about uh, from Anne who says that she's had um, five IVF cycles and she, uh, she's been told that she has uh, um, poor uh, egg quality, uh, what it can be done to improve egg quality? Well, you know, I think that, the, uh, again, the, uh, this is one of our uh, big challenges, but there are a number of things that we use which, which do help. Um, CoQ10 is um, an antioxidant. Uh, uh, it improves activity in, in mitochondria and, and certainly makes a difference to both uh, males and females when it uh, comes to uh, fertility there. So uh, that's certainly something that I recommend for pretty much all my patients. We know that DHEA is um, a, uh, a useful adjuvant and uh, it uh, it's one of those things that uh, improves, uh, uh, I think, ovarian metabolism. Um, it's a, a hormone you can take as a, as a tablet uh, one, three times a day. Um, there are other things uh, such as uh, using some LH with the uh, that's luteinizing hormone in the IVF cycle you've been, you've been uh, uh, you're going through, and that's uh, certainly of uh, some value. That uh, Menopur is the uh, one of the trade names of the uh, uh, injections we use here. So uh, uh, the melatonin is another option. Uh, I think the the problem with egg quality is it really is uh, age related, and often there's not uh, too much we we can do about that. The, uh, I have another question here from uh, uh, John who's saying that he had a vasectomy uh, 11 years ago and 
he wonders uh, what are his chances like uh, in having it reverse. Well, I don't know. They normally say that if it's more than 10 years, you're uh, successful uh, with uh, um, a reversal of a vasectomy, but and that's usually done by the urology doctors. It's, it's not terribly high, or it's less than 30%. So that's where people would usually go through uh, an IVF cycle and use a, uh, a technique where we can actually harvest some um, uh, sperm from uh, uh, the testes and uh, uh, put it into the egg uh, in the uh, in an IVF cycle. So uh, IVF would be your best bet there. Um, we have uh, another question here from uh, uh, Gwen, who says my uh, partner has uh, got a barrier seal. Um, will surgery uh, improve his uh, chances of uh, of our conceiving? We haven't really started yet, but I, I thought I'd ask. Uh, well. We do know that varicocele does, in some cases, improve sperm counts, uh, and it certainly you know, fixes up the discomfort that people can have with, uh, pregnant, with uh, varicoceles, but it's a little bit uncertain as to whether it affects uh, um, pregnancy rates. I'm afraid, afraid that's one of those things we're not entirely uh, certain about at the moment. Um, um, we have another question here. Um, I've had three IVF cycles, and I've got a, a low AMH. Um, uh, I've uh, only had uh, one or two eggs uh, uh, each cycle, despite maximum doses of uh, uh, injection. Um, I've been told that I uh, need to consider uh, getting donor eggs, uh, and uh, my husband's sister has has offered. It. I'm finding it very hard to uh, uh, find anybody to. Uh, uh, Altruistically uh, provide donor eggs. It's very, it's it's a it's a difficult problem, uh, donor eggs, because uh, uh, usually it means uh, you know, going through an IVF cycle for the donor. And uh, uh, in Australia, we're not allowed to pay donors for for uh, uh, doing all that, uh, other than to pay for their accommodation, uh, maybe loss of income uh, during the cycle, and uh, and and uh, cost of transport. Uh, um, if it's uh, your partner or husband's sister, we would say that's uh, an unwise thing to do because of the uh, uh, when you have closely related uh, people, they're more likely to have uh, um, uh, carry uh, autosomal recessive uh, disorder. So there's a higher chance of children having a, a, a major problem. So uh, uh, if you can find another donor somewhere, I, you would need to go that way. We'd. Uh, uh, advise very strongly against against that uh, that option. Um, so I'll just go on to here. So so it just happens we're talking about uh, donors now. Uh, donating uh, sperm eggs, embryos, or uh, cases of surrogacy is uh, uh, you know a, a very large topic, uh, and uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, we have a, an active uh, sperm. Uh, uh, donation program uh, going in Australia. Uh, again, you can't pay for sperm donors um, uh, other than uh, the cost of uh, uh, transport, etc. The um, donor eggs are difficult and usually organised by uh, um, uh, uh, close relatives uh, or uh, uh, in some cases they, they can be uh, arranged overseas. Uh, donor embryos usually come from people who have uh, embryos which they haven't used in previous previous IVF cycles, and surrogacy uh, uh, simply means that uh, someone will carry the the pregnancy for you. And this uh, can occur in cases where a woman uh, doesn't have a uterus due to uh, a number of reasons, including hysterectomy, or um, uh, where. Uh, um, uh, she has uh, medical conditions which would make uh, pregnancy unwise. Uh, paid surrogacy uh, again in Australia is uh, is not allowed. Um, with sperm donation, the um, the biggest uh, consumers of uh, donated sperm uh, we know it's are single women and same sex uh, female couples. Um, uh, the way that's all done is uh, uh, usually through what we call de-identified uh, donors. So. Um, you usually go online after registering and, and can choose the uh, sort of features of the person you're going to use as your donor. And uh, uh, you can have information right in front of you of what often a photograph of them as a child, uh, what their education 
standard is, what their uh, occupation is, uh, you know, what their hair colour is, height and weight, what their interests are, and they often uh, write a little bit about themselves, and, and that's often a very good indicator of what uh, 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 makes people choose uh, one donor over another. Uh, so um, uh, that's probably the safest way to, to go. The uh, uh, known donors, uh, uh, that's fine. The, uh, the, the sperm should be uh, quarantined for uh, uh, six months, uh, in some cases, three months, uh, just to reduce the risk of the infectious diseases. And uh, with any known donors, uh, one's always got to be careful as to how uh, much they want to have with uh, any children which might result from the donation. Uh, and all donors undergo very uh, detailed uh, screening for medical disorders and uh, uh, also for genetic things. Uh, so um, with uh, donation, we have the options of using techniques such as intrauterine insemination, which would have been called artificial insemination in the past, uh, uh, or uh, IVF uh, with ICSI, that's the uh, technique I mentioned before. And uh, egg sharing is an option for some same sex couples. So uh, another thing that we uh, are very much aware of is uh, uh, people who uh, are undergoing uh, uh, treatment for, for cancers, uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy uh, really uh, do make a, uh, a hole in people's fertility reserve and uh, the older you are, the more likely you are to have uh, you know, a, a near complete loss of, um, of uh, ovarian function. So uh, um, it's, um, uh, it's important that we have this option for, uh, for, for, uh, for patients. Um, this uh, can involve doing uh, an IVF cycle and we can start that IVF cycle pretty much immediately that the, uh, the cancer doctors want us to do that. Um, those eggs can be frozen and uh, since freezing and thawing is so effective, you know, we, we get very good results. Uh, there are a number of women who uh, uh, want to uh, preserve their uh, uh, fertility but haven't found either the, the right male or don't feel it's the right time and want to prefer having children. So um, certainly it's, uh, it's, uh, it's worth thinking about. It's hard to say what's the, the right age to make that decision. Uh, we do have the test AMH, which tells us the, uh, your, the number of uh, eggs that you have, but it does not tell us the quality of the eggs. And that's the, the, the problem. It's not only that egg numbers decline with age, but they, uh, the quality declines as well. Uh, so if you are making that decision that you want to freeze your eggs, doing it as, at as young a, an age as you possibly can as be, would be what we'd um, recommend. So uh, I'd... Um, I'd like to say that uh, I've been very happy as a member of the Queensland Fertility Group and that uh, um, we're part of a, a larger Australian and for that matter international group which uh, uh, has been responsible for uh, making a, a, a lot of, uh, of babies. Uh, we are very much a, an individual uh, fertility specialist -led group of, uh, of uh, doctors. We have excellent nurses and some very outstanding uh, you know, world-class scientists that uh, allow us to achieve some, some very good results. Um, uh, the good thing is that we can give a full fertility range of services from some fairly uh, simple, uh, non-intrusive things all the way up to uh, some very involved genetic testing. And uh, we have a, you know, a very well-organized donor program. So, uh, if you like uh, information, please dial the 1800 uh, number. And uh, if you'd like to see any of us as fertility specialists, please have a chat to your GP and they will uh, arrange for a referral. Um, uh, if um, It's important that, that uh, both partners come along to uh, the first interview with the fertility specialist because it's not just that we'd like to meet you both, but um, it's, it really does involve um, two people uh, and uh, it's uh, important that we, we look at the, at the bigger picture. Um, so we'll try to see if there are any... Uh, any further questions from uh, that uh, have come through there?
I've got a question for Nikki. Is uh, IVF the best way to proceed if my partner has had normal sperm and I'm fertile but uh, had a tube ligation uh, eight years ago? Uh, but as far as the figures go now, Nikki, that uh, would be the case. Uh, however, if you're keen to avoid uh, uh, surgery, uh, 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 IVF is uh, an option. A reversal of uh, a tube ligation is... Um, uh, uh, an operation we can largely do through uh, through the telescope now, and uh, it has uh, it has good results. Um, does uh, PCOS affect my AMH result or um, uh, egg count? This comes from Anna. Um, yeah, your so your AMH uh, is. Um, normally elevated with uh, PCOS and uh, the egg count that we see uh, with uh, polycystic ovaries is, is usually quite high. So um, uh, the answer to, uh, to both of those is, uh, is, is a yes. And uh, I've got another question from uh, um, from Carla. Um, could you please explain why one with endometriosis uh, level two A um, had uh, two uh, egg transfers, but they've been unsuccessful? Uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, endometriosis is uh, is one of those things that. Uh, it uh, impairs egg quality, it uh, impairs uh, fertilization, uh, and, and certainly it can uh, affect uh, implantation. We, we do know too that there's a link between endometriosis and early pregnancy loss too. So uh, um, yes, that's, that's one of those things where hopefully uh, over time uh, with a, in a subsequent uh, IVF cycle, you, you would be successful. Well, thank you for watching and I've enjoyed talking to you. Uh, all the best. As I was saying, please uh, contact us at the Queensland Fertility Group or through the 1800 uh, number. My name is Terry Sheehan. My uh, IVF practice is, is based at uh, Evident Park at uh, Flockton Street next to the Northwest Private Hospital. Uh, and thank you for listening this evening.